Hello and welcome everyone, Slothcakes here to another episode of Amphibious Analysis. Now today we're venturing away from the usual mobile suits and discussing something similar but also different, because it's a mobile armor episode. So let's introduce the MAM-07 Grublo. And for the classification, MAM is similar to MSM, it's mobile armor marine similar to mobile suit marine. But before I get started, I should give a quick rundown of what a mobile armor is. And so I don't spend too much time on the subject, I'll give some cliff notes. A mobile armor in Universal Century is a vehicle, be land, space, air, or in this case water, doesn't matter, typically bigger than a mobile suit, ranging from much bigger to goddamn huge. That is constructed using components that are similar to that of a mobile suit, but due to the size, have a much higher generator output, speed, defense, stats, has much more powerful weapons, and can house equipment that mobile suits normally can't. They are mostly non-humanoid and due to the size are costly to make so they are rare. And if that didn't help, to give you more of a layman's versions, they are upscaled combat vehicles made more mobile suity. And if still confused, let's go with an example. Let's look at the big row. First we get a fighter jet, make it huge, upscale its stats and weapons and make it mobile suity, giving it some goofy ass claws and a dumb looking face. Now there's much more to this, but this should hopefully get the point across, so let's get on to the Grublo. Developed by MIP Company, who also made the Zacrello and more importantly the Big Row, the Grublo was designed and based off the Big Row, but for amphibious purposes. Shockingly, it only took them one and a half months to develop and to get him going, and while no reason is given, we can attribute this to a few things. First, it's based off an existing thing, so they don't need to start from the ground up, which sounds obvious, but secondly, unlike things like the Zaku Marine type or the Aqua Gym, which have humanoid designs, not the most hydrodynamic thing out there, the Big Rose design is much more amphibious friendly. Plus, unlike the aforementioned, those mobile suits can go on both land and water, so they're going to need equipment that can go and work in both settings. However, the Grublo only stays in water so he doesn't need to deal with any of that hybrid equipment mumbo jumbo, he just needs shit that can work in water. So the Grublo is a prototype amphibious armor that requires one pilot to use. It was developed in San Diego base and tested in the Gulf of Mexico, with only three developed but was intended for mass production. It has a similar role to that of a submarine, but like I said, much larger, scaled up, and more mobile suity. It's noted that this guy can independently travel the globe, which is an insane deployment time, but again is similar to that of actual submarines. The Grubler was designed for ship combat, naval ships, subs, and can even go after things in the air or at the shore. Its most notable role was that in the original anime, where it was part of the Mad Anglo group and piloted by Captain Flanagan Boone. This was sent by Char to attack the Gundam and White Base. But now let's transition to some numbers, and this is a mobile armor so we're going to be looking at some pretty fat digits. Starting with size, it stands at 26.1 meters and a length of 40.2, that's a little under 2 and a quarter of the Gundam. And for weight, we have a max out of a whopping 793.7 tons, and an empty at 324.1. And if you're wondering about the massive 469.6 ton gap, we can maybe attribute it to the amount of ammo he carries, but it doesn't nearly make up that number. Maybe it's due to the amount of water he takes in, either to cool down his generator, match outside pressure, or to fill the ballot tanks. This could lead to why the massive gap, it could just all be the amount of seawater he carries. Or it could just be that this is sci-fi and sometimes the numbers in sci-fi is a little iffy. And finally to his generator, we have a power output of 11,000 kilowatts. Now this comes to no surprise with first of all mobile armors cause they all have massive generators, but with something that has an apparent deployment time of being able to soak the globe, this makes sense. But now let's move on to his weapons, and he doesn't have too much of a variety, so it's going to be short, and none of his weapons are complicated, they're actually really, really damn simple. First up is torpedoes, and a whole lot of them. A pair of 7 tube torpedo launchers that hold 3 each, giving him 42 to play with. They're located in the front body of the Grublo, and are his main weapon, and actually his only ranged amphibious weapon. 
While the size is not given, these are torpedoes for a mobile armor, so you expect them to be bigger than normal. And also, this thing is made for ship combat, so you want to use some big torpedoes for big ships. But they're also shown to be quite powerful, because without even a direct hit, they cause some good damage. But as torpedoes goes, there's only a few interesting things. Their location, their size, how many it can hold, and how many launches it has, because they're just torpedoes. Moving on. Next up is the surface-to-air missile launchers, also known as the SAM. They have a similar vibe of just being explosives. There are two launchers located in the main body aiming upwards. They're used for surface-to-air, it's in the name. SAM can be used for attacking airborne craft like shown with white base, but not only that, if something's above you like a naval ship, you can hit that as well. However, if you're feeling extra spicy, you can nail anything close to the shore or near a body of water. Now, if you look at the same missile closely, on the side, those are not guiding fins, those are blades. Someone at MIP Company decided to put two large blades on the each side of the SAM missile. Why? Who the hell knows? The only actual reason these things could be useful is if the SAM missile misses its target just by a hair, but the blades are able to connect, damaging whatever it was trying to hit, which could then detonate the SAM missile close by. Which sounds insanely specific, which it is, but happened in the original anime with Sally and the G-Armor, so... Good on you, whoever thought of this idea at MIP. So, if you are in, on, above, or near a body of water, the Grublo can huck explosive at you. And paired with his long deployment time, that's pretty scary. Now finally, the claw arms, because Xeon really wanted oversized claws on an oversized submarine. When not deployed, they face backwards on its underside, and the palms look like they have some sort of propulsion device. But when ready, they spring forward. The arm part is similar to that of the Zagoks or Gogs, bendable, multi-jointed, giving a massive range and flexibility. This makes it so the underwater pressures and currents don't push on any of the joints the wrong way, damaging or breaking them. As for the claw part, it's three prongs with simple articulation, with being able to grab things like the Gundam. Now, looking at its size and weight, if you swing at anything, you're gonna capsize it. Submarines, a single backhand, it's now a underwater metal coffin. Ships, same case. And for much more massive ships, all the Grublo's gotta do is just manhandle it a little bit, punch some holes into it, let the water flow in, and nature will take care of the rest. And those are the weapons, nothing out the blue and nothing surprising. But what is surprising is what it doesn't have, and that's a beam weapon. And lacking a beam weapon's not uncommon, but many amphibious mobile suits have them. And what this thing's based off, the big vote also has it. So let's go into a little more detail and see what's up. First up, it could be production time. It only took them a month and a half, so maybe that was for deadline reasons. Maybe they wanted this thing out as soon as possible, and making the MPC would have taken too long. Maybe the faster this guy got deployed, the faster he could come back with combat data, and the faster it would be mass produced. It could also be resources, material, or tech reason. Maybe they just couldn't make the NPC because they didn't have the things to make it, or maybe it was being sent over and it just would have taken too long. No one at that base had Amazon Prime, so the shipping would have taken forever, so why not send the Grublo? It's finished, so let it go out, get combat data, and by the time it comes back, the NPC or the materials for it will be here. Maybe the reason is the NPC itself. Maybe they couldn't get a proper one working, since you gotta remember, the big row is spacefaring, and amphibious mobile suits go in water, but also land. This guy, just water. Meaning, unlike the others, he's gonna fire its MPC in water. And if you don't know, beam shots deteriorate, losing range and power when shot in water. A example is the Grublo being blasted by the Gundam. Normally the beam shot would have punched straight through the thing, but here it only melted the claw. And an installing expensive high production weapon that won't perform to its standard is um, not that stellar. Now there are beam weapons that are made to be used in water, and maybe Xeon was either developing said tech or seeing which one would be the best option. And to give you a few ideas, we have the Ager, a massive beam cannon manned by a Zaku Marine type. This thing fires a projectile that creates a path of air bubbles. The air bubbles push the water away, creating a path or like a tunnel for the beam shot to travel. There's also the Gundam Marine Type's beam rifle. 
it compacts Minofsky particles into a much thinner, tighter shot. This is so when it fires underwater, it deteriorates at a much slower rate, allowing it to keep most of its power. Or they can do the path of Gundam Seed and use Photon Maser technology. This utilizes sound waves to produce the shot. This allows it to be fired underwater without the downsides. Now, the Zark was the only mention of this in UC, so maybe this was just too complicated to work or too expensive. And while all these might seem like good ideas, they all have their pros and cons, there's also the Unga Bunga method. Zion could just slap the biggest NPC they can find on this guy and call it a day. Because when you think about it, the point on which a beam shot deteriorates to be useless is going to take much longer to get to when the shot is as big as a damn mobile suit. Now, is this idea stupid? Debatable. Is it unnecessary? Maybe. Is it expensive? Definitely. But would it have changed things? And I think yes. Even though the Gundam has lunar titanium and the underwater, at the range they're at, even if the Grublo had a regular beam weapon, it could have done some form of damage to turn the tides of that battle. Now let's imagine if it was properly scaled for the Grublo and backed by that massive generator, this thing's gonna turn the Gundam into soft serve. Now, back on topic, the Grublo didn't do much. It's not that it was bad or anything, it just had a shitty run. There was only three made and it never got mass produced, so it never got to make a name for itself. And we can thank this to its shitty luck. It was dealt a bad hand and it was forced to play it. I mean, just imagine it. You're higher up at Xeon and your amphibious prototype mobile armor was sent out to attack a single assault carrier holding a few mobile suits and it gets destroyed. Yeah, that's not the best way to start your career. But thankfully, it didn't get thrown away. The Grublo does have some variants and did lead to another mobile armor. Starting with the variants, we have the Grublo Unit 4, and please ignore the sick ass looking Zagark in the front and focus in the back. Visually, it still looks like a Grublo. It looks more complicated and just has more going on, but we can still see the Grublo in it. We see those two large claws, we see places that look like they house missiles and torpedoes. The mono eye is moved up a little bit and it just has much more detail and it's just much more busy. The claws look different, we still have three, but the bladed part looks like it's sticking out of this thick metal part which looks like it's more shielded in a way. It's also attached to a forearm that looks like it has some thick armor to it. And if you look at the bottom, we see these two things sticking outwards. At the bottom, it does look like it has claws, so I don't know if these are an extra set of arms, propellant devices, or a type of weapon. And sadly, this is where the info runs dry. I couldn't find anything more about it or what the hell those things in the bottom are. But that is a nice looking Zagok. Anyways, next in line is the Grublo Underwater Bit Mounted Prototype. Long name. For the most part, it's a Grublo. However, its arms are replaced with underwater use bits, which are torpedo like pods that can be sent out and have their own propulsion, venues, and generator. Plus, they're equipped with a beam gun at the end, which look like these holes right here. And while looking like massive torpedoes, they don't move like them because they can perform more drastic maneuvers due to their venues. The Grublo's also equipped with a sonar dome, which is found in submarines and ships that help with navigation, detection, and other key recon tasks. Now, a key feature is the Psycom system, a device that reads psycho waves emitted by new types and allows them to control things with their minds, and in this case, it's the bits. It also mentions quasi psychom system, which allows non-new types, normies, to use these things. It's just much more difficult and requires multitasking, and sometimes requires a second pilot dedicated to said thing. Now, this guy had two weeks of action, where it fought and took down a Federation warship in a satisfactory way, but Xeon never adopted this, and it was later converted back into a regular Grublo. Maybe it was just too pricey, too many resources, you're gonna need a new type or a highly skilled pilot to make this thing work, and with what happened with White Base and the Gundam, maybe that just muddied its name too much. And for a fun fact, the main character to Code Fairy, Alma Sterner, was a test pilot for this, but she never got it to work. Now moving to redesigns, we have one by Kazuhicha Kondo. And this Grublo still looks like a Grublo, just a little more busy. However, on the underside, we don't see the claw arms and we see these massive big parts. Looking like the prior Grublo we talk about, they just look like they detach or they house a lot of missiles or torpedoes. 
Or maybe the end of it houses large claws and it actually is tucked inside that it can extend out and just use as pincers. Next up is the Gundam Thunderbolt version with a nice sleek design being much more busy and having a lot of things going on. The biggest visual change is his arms. When not deployed, they're on the underside. And when deployed, these arms are much more menacing, having more detail to them, especially in the palm areas. Also, his shape changes, looking much more like an arrowhead. However, the biggest change lies in his weapons, and he still has missiles and torpedoes up the wazoo, but now he has some plasma cannons. With one in each palm, they're similar to a underwater welding tool or a plasma cutter. Now we assume its max range is short due to him only using it in close range. As for power, I assume this can eat through like a submarine and a mobile suit, however the Atlas' shield was strong enough to block this. But thankfully, the Grubbler has a third plasma cannon located in his mouth area. This is much larger than the hand ones and has significantly longer range, being shot deep underwater and actually breaking surface. It's also depicted differently than the hand ones, being much more like a mega particle cannon. And this could have been a glimpse of what the mass production Grublo would have looked like. But sadly, we never got to see that. However, this was not the end, because 16 years later, the Grublo helped lead the development of the Shambolo, another amphibious mobile armor. Now, for sidetrack tidbits, this line of mobile armor is the Big Row, Grub Low, and Shamblo. Odd how the last two end with low. Now, it could be that they're amphibious and that's why, or maybe it's a mistranslation that everyone just rolled with. It's a common thing when translating Japanese to English for having the R's and L's mixed up due to pronunciation. And Big Row is actually a play on words of Big Claw, so that name makes sense. But maybe for whatever reason, this error occurred on the last two, so maybe their proper name is Grub Row and Shambro. And even with that said, I'm still gonna call it the Grub Low and the Shambro because I'm used to it, but I thought that was a neat enough thing to share. Moving on, the Grub Low was odd. They got it to work, and it worked well. It was basically a giant submarine, and that's pretty nice. And maybe if they mass produced it, it would have made an impact. But there were some problems, it was water only, and it just took so many resources to make. And also, I do believe if the first prototype didn't get bodied by a Muro and white base, Xeon might have looked at things differently. Maybe if it had its NPCs, things might have changed. Then again, the Thunderbolt had a plasma cannon, actually three, and it still got washed by the Atlas, so maybe not. But now, let's end it here, and I do want to leave you with a question. Like the Big Row, which got turned amphibious and became the Grub Row, what would happen if Xeon did this to its other mobile armors? We have things like the Brob Row and the Elmith, but I'd like to see the Zacrello get turned amphibious. Not because I think it would be effective or anything, but it would be amazing for terror tactics. Like, just imagine this thing in water. You just look in a deep sea and this thing's approaching you. That would be horrifying. And I'd even mention its variants, which look even more horrifying and look much more like sea monsters, so why not throw them in water? But anyways, if you're still listening, thank you for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Amphibious Analysis. Slothcakes here. Hope to see you guys in the next episode, but till then, have a good one and bye bye